Okay, welcome to Into the Channel, a podcast primarily about women's football. Before we hit the pitch, if you enjoy the show or love women's football as much as your boys do, come kick it with us already. Subscribe, follow YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you like to watch or listen at ITC underscore pod on X. I am your host, Dino De Cespedes, and as always, I am joined by my co-host, Mr. Grant Angle. What is up, man? I'm feeling fantastic, buddy. Uh, we're entering a new frontier here in Into the Channel. So I'm excited to present these scientific findings that we have stumbled upon. I love it. Let's embark. <laughs> where, where, where do you want to get started? Okay. So one of the things, let me just get this out of the way here because this is important. There we go. One of the things I love about football is that every team is compared against every other team in the league table. In most leagues, there aren't usually divisions within the same league. There aren't conferences. Every team plays each other twice. You count up the wins, draws, and losses. You account for the goals scored for and against. You calculate the differential, and voila. You establish where teams are ranked, and you decide who is the best team over the course of the season. I think it's about as perfect of a mathematical depiction of comparing or ranking sports teams as you can have in professional sports. Agreed. But it does leave out a few things. Uh, vibes, feels, hopes, dreams, healthy skepticism, etc. So your pals at uh, the Into the Channel podcast have created a proprietary tiering system that not only considers on-field results, but all of those other qualities as well. So here's what I did. I logged all of the inputs. Picture me in a dark room, a single light bulb dangling above me. Mm -hmm. I logged all of those inputs on an Apple IIe computer and out of my printer of that old blue and white paper with like the perforated edges with the circle, like the holes punched in the side. Dot matrix. <laughs> Thank you. And from that printer on that beautiful paper came the results that we will for now call the Into the Channel NWSL tiers. My last disclaimer here is that there's no guarantee that these tiers will reflect every club's current placement on the table. That's what makes our tiering system so special. So if your club is in the bottom tier this week, uh, that could change depending on the performance or other factors. I don't know about you, but if you're looking for the very straightforward table, I just go to the FootMob app on my phone, type in NWSL, boom, I can look at the table. That's all available for you to find. But for the into the channel, NWSL tiers, well, there's only one place you can get those, and that would be this fine program. So, Dino, do you have any questions or clarifications about this new system? I don't think that I do, and it makes perfect sense to me. You know, you can't quite go to FootMob or FB Ref and sort by vibes. Mm -hmm. So this is why we need tiers. And just to clarify, uh, these aren't power rankings. No. These aren't based on points on the table. Mm -hmm. We're simply going to group these teams together based on where we think the whole dish is settling, you know, with regard to this 14 course dinner. And I'm also guessing no homerism this week. So no Seattle, no Orlando Never. at the very top of their own tier all by themselves. I imagine we've got our old school journalism fedoras on with the index card tucked into the side <laughs> with the word press on it because that's just how we roll here at the ITC. Damn right. Yeah. I mean, only the most unbiased of coverage, most unbiased of analyses on Into the Channel. And we're going top to bottom or bottom to top. Bottom to top? Bottom to top. Yes. An Let's important go. clarification. I'm ready. All right. Bottom tier sounds derogatory, sounds negative. We're only in week three of the season. Nobody be alarmed here. First tier we're talking about. I'm calling this one I need to see more. This could be for a variety of reasons. Uh, all of these teams on this tier have left something to be desired in one way or another, or maybe there's something that I think might be somewhat promising or some good qualities about these clubs, but I still want to see some more. So I am going to start right here in my hometown, or at least the city that I live in, uh, Seattle. I'm starting with the Seattle Reign. Mm. The link-up play in the attack really lives up to the title of this tier. It hasn't been going great. Now, obviously, we've talked about it. We have uh, Ji So Yun, the retirement of Mega Rapino, the loss of Emily Sonnet, the loss of uh, Rose Lavelle. A lot of moving parts here. So we need to see some more. We need to see that chemistry develop, I think, especially on the attacking side. But that's fine. You got to give these things some time. So show me some more. I like it. I like the uh, positive spin on the old bottom tier. <laughs> uh, you know, I let's, let's keep things optimistic. Let's keep things looking up. Respect to you. You got that fedora on, perfectly fitted. 
uh, <laughs> to start the, the bottom tier with your Seattle reign. So uh, props to you again. Seattle, they've lacked some clinicality in the final third. Three matches, 38 shots total, just nine on target. That's right around 23%. We talked about Barcelona last week. Tough to compare anybody to Barcelona, but they were up near 40%, uh, just to kind of like put a little benchmark on that. Jordan Haitema specifically, that's a player I think we can look at with some room to improve. Eight shots for her on the season, second most on the team behind G. Just one on target for her, though, and zero goals thus far. Any kind of Seattle turnaround is probably pretty dependent on Haitema getting things straightened out. So that's something we'll definitely keep an eye on. Absolutely. Uh, next, we have Houston Dash. All right, Houston. Great win versus Bay FC. Mm -hmm. And you are fourth in the table. It's also early April. Uh, So I am (laughs) eager to see, can you score some more goals? And what can you kind of put together to build on what was, you know, not a great season last year? So I feel like we are within our rights to have some level of, not skepticism in a negative way, but again, to the name of the tier, a reason to say, I want to see a little bit more. Totally fair. Totally agree to you. Houston Dash are only one one and one team in the standings. Nice. They grinded out that tough road win over Bay FC. Hell yeah. In that franchise's first home game, which is always tough, kind of feels like that first home game is like you get the extra extra. Oh yeah. A uh, little bit better production from this Dash side who only managed 16 goals in 22 matches last season. <laughs> Defense was solid though last year, just 18 goals allowed. Their goal differential though this year, to your point, already worse than last year. So they were sure. minus two last year for the season. <laughs> They're currently sitting at minus three, having given up seven goals in three matches. Their Mexican connection, Diana Ordonez and Maria Sanchez, have been pretty dangerous in spots. Yeah. They're going to need a lot more from those two to stay in the playoff mix, though. Totally agree. Ordonez looked great against Bay FC. Mm-hmm. Um, next, we have Angel City. To our pals out there in L.A., you are already one of the premier franchises in this league. I know you have a good 90 minutes of football in you. We just haven't seen it yet in this young season. You got to show me more. I, I No arguments here as well. I did the math on this team. Not sure how correlated this is or if your boy might be being a little ageist here. But this Angel City team, six starters over the age of 30, average age mm-hmm. for their starters, 27 and a half years old. Uh, not a lot of spring chickens running around out there. And that's being pulled down significantly by 19-year-old Alyssa Thompson and 17-year-old Kennedy Fuller. Minus three goal differential in three matches for them as well, and just a single point on the season thus far. I know we're talking NWSL tiers, but if this continues for old Angel City, uh, it might be some tiers with a TEA. <laughs> Nicely done. Remember, folks, it's only week three, so don't crush us too bad. We don't want cold takes exposed we don't need that in our lives. This is this is a living, breathing document. Next, we have the Portland Thorns. You found a way to steal a point Ooh. at home against Racing Louisville. Credit to you for doing it. But man, that does not sound like the Portland Thorns I know. One point, three matches played. Uh, you got to show me some more when you got a roster that looks like that. Pretty bold, I think. Portland in this uh, bottom tier need to see more tier, uh, not jumping to any conclusions tier, just <laughs> exactly <laughs> can start the process of doing this analysis, <laughs> this season long analysis. To your earlier point, this is just the very beginning of April. You know, the finals don't get here until November. So mm-hmm. it's pretty much a lifetime away. With all that said, though, the Thorns looking tremendously wobbly this season, especially on defense, lost at home to Gotham 1 0, escaped a home match against Racing Louisville with a draw, giving up two to them. And the current, they score on everybody, but Portland gave up five goals to KC. Again, Portland winless on the season. Two losses already. They're going to absolutely need to make some adjustments defensively. There's only so much Sophie Smith and that Portland attack can do up front. They're looking very gettable these days. (laughs) I know that they were one of the chic preseason picks to kind of like go pretty deep. (laughs) So a little surprising to see them in this bottom tier, but I think kind of where they should be based on what we've seen so far. Imagine my surprise when I input all that data into my Apple IIe and it spit out these results. I may already owe Portland an apology for picking them to win the title this year. So that could be on your boy. So sorry about that. But like Dino said, it's early. Be easy on us, uh, freezing cold takes. That's all I'll say. (laughs) Uh, Next, the Utah Royals. Here's where we are so far. Three weeks into their return to the league. Opening week, home loss to Chicago. Second week. 
relatively shocking win at home versus the North Carolina Courage, who looked dominant in their in their opening season match. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then third week of the season this past week, I think a relatively unsurprising loss in Washington, D.C. to the spirit. I think this one kind of speaks for itself. Expansion franchise, relying on some young players. We like some of the moves they made, but we got to see a lot more before I think we start drawing any real conclusions about this club. Yeah, I think playoffs are going to be a little bit of a stretch for this side. I kind of like their spirit, no pun intended. They're not very good yet, but they do fight. They do play hard. If you are a Royals fan, you have a player to get really, really excited about, and that's Ali Centnor. Yeah. I mean, you know, she goes first in the draft. I think our guy Chris from Soccer Dossier was not over the moon about her. I think he kind of clumped the very top of that draft all together with regard to yeah. like, all right, well, these top three or four are like really in the mix for, I believe you asked him about who could be uh, in the MVP conversation one day. Sure. So I kind of entered the season a little cooler on Ali Sentinel, even though she went first. And there's that tremendous track record of NWSL draft number one picks, just crushing it in the league. But she looks awesome. Unafraid, aggressive, seven shots this season, five on target. Mm-hmm. So she's accurate as well. Two goals already in her young career. And if she's going to be this kind of offensive threat, I think that, that's like legit a player that you can build around. You know, she did have uh, the tendency to kind of like, I don't want to say get lost a little bit, but mm-hmm. there were some fast breaks where I'm just like, all oh, right, oh, this one's going to center. And then she's just not in the frame. <laughs> right. And then she shows up like 10 seconds later. I was like, okay, that was a little odd. <laughs> so I think there's some growing up to do, I think for the whole team, to your point, this is an expansion team, yeah. you know, expectations should be realistic. I think for them to even think about the playoff, you know, conversation, even though it is top eight this year, I think they're going to for sure, for sure need a rookie of the year type season from Sentinel. Yeah, totally agree. Sentinel looks, looks pretty great. Young player going to have some growing pains, willing to fire shots from around the 18. Love that part about our game. But yeah, I think you were totally right about that. A lot to be excited about if you're a Royals fan. Mm-hmm. Last team on the tier, Racing Louisville. Lost a two-goal lead at home to your Orlando Pride. Played Houston to a scoreless draw. And then lost a two-goal lead to Portland. Those four points that they kind of left on the table there, those might be important down the road. Hard to disagree with that. Got to keep in mind, though, this is a team that finished ninth last season. Hmm. On the flip side of your point, though, Undefeated, never lost still. <laughs> That's true. Three men. <laughs> I think one bright spot for this Louisville side, Nigerian forward Uchenna Kanu, mm-hmm. three matches, three shots on target, three goals. So I can go. No biggie. <laughs> Just another absolute menace from that continent of Africa with a game built for the NWSL. Hell yeah. She's in her second season for racing after coming over from Linkoping in one of our favorite leagues, the Demos Fenskin. Let's go. Love that experience. Um, okay, next tier. I'm calling this one, the Calvary is on its way. The name is relatively self-explanatory. These squads have a range of results in the first three weeks, but they know for sure help is on the way. We are starting in your home base, Orlando, Florida. And I got two words, bub. Barbara Banda. Maybe they can do something other than draw once she's in the squad. And I believe they will. That's fair. Three matches, three draws, three points for my pride. Up and down season, for sure. But we've got, like you mentioned, that killer waiting in the wings. Mm-hmm. Barbara Banda. Adriana's been really great this year. Marta, 38 years old, doesn't matter. She's been great, too. Solid contributions from Julie Doyle. Carrie Abello and the entire back line. Super steady. Just four goals given up this season. And I'm still kind of TBD on this Orlando side. Did I pick them to reach the NWSL final? Of course I did. But there's definitely a world where you have Banda, Julie Doyle, Adriana, Marta, Angelina, all creating chances with Banda kind of being that missing piece. If everything kind of works out, could kind of transition to like a, a legitimate title contender. We like talked about like November being so far away. That's a lot of time to gel. Yeah. So I think I, I'm happy to be in this tier, the Calvary tier. I just counted it back up. Six teams in your I need to see more tier. You know, that's, uh, that's a pretty fat tier. So I think like I'm excited <laughs> to see how the rest of this, <laughs> this 14 shakes out. According to our Apple IIe, of course. Of course. This is a scientific endeavor. Yes. Let's see here. Next, the Washington Spirit. I think this one, this w- it was a pretty obvious one. I think the old uh, Apple IIe knew what it was doing with this one. <laughs> <laughs> the The Spirit officially announced today, uh, the day we are recording this, that would be April 2nd. Lacey Santos has signed with the club, and we already know uh, Jonathan Geraldes is going to be added to the mix. That's just a couple of big positives. You know I like good manager talk. Really? 
adding Lacey Santos to the side, that is gigantic. Absolutely. I mean, this team already kind of looks like a lock to make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Trinity Rodman, most of my Trinity Rodman experience is from the U.S. Women's National Team. Mm -hmm. She is the perfect NWSL player. Like yep. her skill set, I can see why. Um, obviously, she's a lock. I was always for the U.S. teams, and why she's so productive in this league. Something about her skills, uh, her physical traits, her instincts that I think match up tremendously well for this league. Rookie Hal Hirschfeld already scored for the Spirit. Corey Bethune looks like another game breaker that Hidalgo's will have at yeah. his disposal. Real, real sleeping giant potential here for this Washington side. My pick to win the whole thing. Thank you very much. I do think defensively, they're going to have some stuff to sort out. Three matches, just three goals allowed, but they've conceded in every match so far. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, once you add Santos to the mix, how does she also affect uh, the defense as well? So shout to the Washington Spirit. Friends of the program uh, followed Let's us go. on Twitter, if if you can believe it. So, I mean, I see what you're doing. And if you, if you watch, like, the Washington Spirit's Twitter account, shout out to the admin over there. The graphics, awesome. The tweets, funny, hilarious. The gifts, the the short videos, they are just crushing it over there. So if you are not following them, do yourself a favor. Even if you're not one of their supporters, they're doing good work over there. Very much enjoyed their Lacey Santos tweet today with all the Colombian flags. <laughs> just very efficient to the point, the right level of uh, enthusiasm. So props to them for sure. Total cosign. Perfectly done. Next on the tiers, Gotham FC. Now, obviously, we're still right on the heels of the devastating uh, Midge Purse injury news. They lose a critical player there, the literal MVP of the NWSL championship match last season. But they still have some players to get back. Rose Lavelle and Lynn Williams have not played, have not competed in one match uh, so far in this young season. Now, obviously, Gotham competed in the Challenge Cup to open the season, uh, so they've only played two regular season games. But still, no Rose Lavelle, no Lynn Williams. You're not at full strength without those two. And they're going to want them back if they want any chance at competing for a chance to retain their title. Still super early. Obviously, you mentioned two injuries, two big-time players coming back. But mm, they're not looking super great. Counting the Challenge Cup, Gotham's only mustered one goal in three matches. They've only allowed two. You did mention those injuries. But I feel like still enough talent on the roster that I think Team should be a little bit more productive. Obviously, Tierna Davidson, Jenna Nicewire, Crystal Dunn, Bruno Nina looks good. Sonnet, Esther Gonzalez, all in the lineup last weekend, and they get blanked away at North Carolina. And a tough one. Yeah. Mentioned their one goal in the season, again, counting the Challenge Cup. So we're, we're considering this all three matches here. Sure. That goal was a result of 36 shots, Oof. just nine on target, 25% shot on target rate, not great. 11% conversion rate, even worse. Tough to win like that. They definitely, definitely need those reinforcements to arrive, and probably pretty soon here. Yeah, have to agree with that. But like you said, wealth of talent, interesting to see uh, what happens when the cavalry shows up. Uh, last club on the tier, Bay FC. Mm. Rachel Kundanaji scored a banger in the last match, but she came on for Asisa Oshwala. So in this case, they've had Oshwala. Oshwala scored in the in the opening match of the season. They have Kundanaji. Kundanaji scored in her first appearance uh, with the club. But in my mind, or pardon me, in the uh, algorithm's mind, in the in the complicated <laughs> math equation that the computer uh, processed and spit out here, the cavalry showing up is playing Kundanaji and Oshwala at the same time. I would imagine that would look like playing uh, Kundanaji at left wing and Oshwala at essentially number nine. So I'm going to make this plea to Bay FC manager Albertine Montoya. Do it, man. Play Kundanaji and Oshwala at the same time. Please. What are we waiting for? <laughs> I think, <laughs> come on. I mean, it's still so, so early. So I think sure. you want to give them, give them a chance. <laughs> um, I appreciate you bringing it to my attention, too, that uh, manager Montoya, Cuban descent. Mm -hmm. How about that? Uh, and he was also born in Camagüe, where my family happens to be from. A lot of people think my family's from Columbus, but no, it's Camagüe. <laughs> <laughs> and Cuba's, Cuba's a big place. Enough about me, though. I'm still high on this Bay FC team. A couple of really disappointing instances of dropping points, giving up a late one to the Spirit to lose that one, and then giving up an even later one to lose their home opener to the Dash, which you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. and sort of sort of spoil that tremendous Kunanaji goal. Kind of reminds me of like when Kyrie crosses somebody up, then finds an open guy for corner three, and uh, that guy knocks it off the side of the backboard. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I think still a long season, still an expansion team. 
But to your point, I think once they get things sorted, Oshwala looks so dynamic, Kundanaji Amazing. as well. But I mean, I think it takes more than just obviously like that firepower up front. So still some work to do to get things sorted out. Yeah, really interested to see how they look once they're pretty much playing at like at like full strength. Um, okay, next tier. I'm calling this tier the I want to believe tier. You know, no real like rooting interest, but it's interesting to see how the table looks early in the season. So we're starting off the Chicago Red Stars. They added Lauren Donaldson at manager and Sam Staub in defense. And this team does not look, from the matches that I've watched them play, they don't look like they finished dead fucking last in the table last season. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody enjoys a good worst to first story, but can they keep it going? That's the real question. And shout out to Lauren Donaldson, who's managing this undefeated Red Stars team. Yeah. Just two goals allowed this season. I think that's kind of where they've been making their hay. Alyssa Nair, the, resur- the resurgent Alyssa Nair, she stopped eight of the 10 shots on target she's faced this season. I don't have to run this to the Apple IIe. I'm just going to do this using the old noggin. That's a save rate of 80%. <laughs> mm-hmm. We've, we've talked about her struggles last season. She gave up 50 goals. Save rate last year hovering right around 64%. So big time, big time improvement from last year to this year. And lastly, turns out Mallory Swanson, sort of a difference maker. Yeah. Safe to say she's worked her way back in a huge way. And you can imagine there's still probably quite a bit of room for her to continue to take her game up a level from here. She looks awesome, though. She kind of has the look of like somebody that's only going to get better from here. I'm pretty excited about Swanson, Chicago, Alyssa Nair, Donaldson, the whole Red Stars vibe. Definitely going to be interesting to watch. Next on this tier, I think another club that if you said before the season, they're going to be near the top of the table, really at any point, I think people will be like, "Uh, that's probably a tall mountain to climb. North Carolina Courage. I think that's what we said. I think it is exactly what we said. Um, I don't know if the algorithm was influenced by those takes. Who knows? Who can say? It's a black box, that thing. (laughs) Exactly. Who knows? Um, The North Carolina Courage, they lost the MVP of the league. Uh, when Caroline injured her ACL late last season. Now, they started this year with a dominating 5-1 win over Houston and then a 1-0 win over the Champs. That's a pretty good resume so far. But they also had that kind of strange, as we mentioned earlier, that weird away loss to Utah sandwiched in between. Here they are, sitting on six points. Bianca St. George is scoring. Ashley Sanchez and Denise O'Sullivan have played well. And this team is making us pay attention early. And so I think they fit squarely in, I want to believe in this, but we'll have to see. We'll have to see, I think, is right on the money. Not sure entirely what to make of this team without Caroline, like you mentioned. I feel like they're probably like a mid-table team. They did notch that big win over Gotham in a match where I thought they spent most of it getting outplayed, to be honest. Gotham outshot them 15-6, to but was only able to put one shot on target. Yeesh, that's... (laughs) <laughs> not great. Uh, so perhaps a recipe for success, maybe centered more around defense, more around possession. But I think it uh, c- could be a little bit of fool's gold. I'm not going to quite go all the way there yet, but that's certainly possible with this Courage team. Absolutely. We'll be exciting to see. I re- And I do realize wait and see is not the most exciting sports analysis, but you know the algorithm spits out what it spits out during week three of the season. What can we do? Uh, we'll check the dot matrix printer a little bit later. Make sure that the little spikes are going through the the, the sides of the paper. Exactly. Um, if you're under 40 years old, you have no idea what I'm talking about, but just, just trust us. Yeah, yeah, it's totally a thing. Don't worry, guys. Um, all right, <laughs> next tier, respect the shield. Mm. We're going to talk about the San Diego Wave. They already have the Challenge Cup trophy in the trophy case. And even though they lost their first league match, they still have Kaylin Sheridan, Naomi Gurma, Sophia Jakobsen, Jaden Shaw, and Alex Morgan. This is a good team. Mm -hmm. I think they're one of the top tier teams. The Apple IIe agrees with me. Where are you at on San Diego? Who am I to argue with uh, technology? I think um, San Diego is right in that upper, upper crust. They lose a tough one to KC, more on KC later. I thought they, I don't know, just looked really good this year. Talented roster up and down. Hannah Lundqvist, who we talked about before the season. 21-year-old signee from Atleti. She's adjusted really, really nicely to the speed and physicality of the NWSL. I really don't see a scenario where this wave isn't kind of in that top three or four. Yeah. I really liked how they summoned that late goal, you know, this past weekend <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, to kind of like squeeze out a win. And I just don't think there's a scenario where they're not challenging for the shield. I mean, playoffs is a whole different beast, but I think this team is built 
to win and get results. They're going to have a talent advantage in most of the matchups that they play. Yeah, I I mean, there were some folks who did not enjoy that late goal this past week (laughs) as much, but that's neither here nor there. What can you do? (laughs) Straight down the line here at the ITC. That's right. Um, And with that said, there's one team remaining. There's one tier remaining. I was surprised by the name of this tier, but I think I like it. This tier is called the Temwa Chewinga Show featuring the Vlatko Revenge Tour. Mm. Temwa Chewinga has completely changed the trajectory, the expectations, and the league table math when we talk about this team. You helpfully nudged me last week where I tried to couch it a little bit. I was doing a little bit of fence sitting and saying, I think Temwa Chewinga, you could put her in that Barbara Banda or that Asiso Oshwala conversation as she walks in and she's probably one of the better players in the league. And you're like, dude, no probably about it. She's immediately <laughs> one of the best. Like just watching her play, she's immediately one of the best players in the league. I don't think there's any argument against that at this point. I know we're only three matches in, but we watch the games, bro. You see, you see what's happening on the field. Yeah. I think the secondary piece of that is now we got Vlatko. He's looking like a Batman villain who has felt like he was wronged by society. He spent the win- <laughs> he he has spent the winter building a super weapon. He's going to block out the sun or whatever comic book nonsense you want to talk about it. And he's going to unleash Chewinga, Bia, Dabinia. Di Bernardo is scoring some goals at this point. And he's going to unleash that on all of American soccer and say, it's time for me to get the last laugh. I think that's on the money. I, I'm, I'm envisioning like a Lex Luthor, straight bald <laughs> haircut, dark glasses, and just total total villainy from Vladko. Mm-hmm. Um, this Casey current side, probably the story of the season for me, yep. finished 11th last season. Yeah. 11 goals in three matches. They only scored 30 goals all of last season. They have <laughs> <we> 11. <laughs> three games, three wins, and they've mowed down the teams that finished first, second, and fifth in last season's NWSL standings. Awesome. And I just love the fact that they want to go blow for blow with you. Against Angel City, current are up 2-0. 50th minute, Sydney LaRue claws one back. 2-1 to one now in favor of KC. 68 seconds later, yep. Jen Hildreth, who was on the play-by-play, speaking on LaRue's goal, quote, and just like that, makes this match feel an awful lot different. Just a one-goal advantage for Kansas City. End quote. Eight seconds after Hildreth finishes that thought... <laughs> <laughs> Barely enough time to take a breath. A Tim Wachowinga rocket is already in the back of the net. Two goal lead restored. Goal and an assist for Temwa. Goal and an assist for Bia. Goal and an assist for Di Bernardo. Alex Bantra also gets her first goal of the season. No Dabini in this one. Tim Wachowinga, my new interim favorite player in the league at the moment. That is until another African superstar striker makes her debut for a certain <laughs> team in a certain town in which I happen to live. Mm-hmm. A lot to be excited about. I would say, man, and let me just shout out Vlatko on this because I thought it was I thought it was a very it was an important point that he raised is that somebody was asking him about Chewinga's speed after the match, and we reference it too because she is fucking lightning fast. But I love what Vlatko did, and he said she is fast, uh, and I'm paraphrasing here. I don't I do not have the exact quote, but he was very quick to say, but I don't want her to be solely defined by her speed. There's actually like research around this. Shame on me for not citing the exact source. We can get back to you guys on that. But it is legitimate. And Dino, you and I have watched sports our entire life. We're bordering on old men at this point. And I'll just say it frankly. When people talk about black players, they almost always talk about their speed and their athleticism. Chewinga is also a genius when she is down in the final third, in the attacking third. The movement, the passing, the timing of the runs, and I thought it was a really cool thing by Vladko to bring up. Yes, the speed is absolutely a factor. You'd you'd have to be blind not to see that. But her intelligence is absolutely A1, and I think it's what's going to make her... She's already going to be in the running for NWSL MVP. I think it could be the thing that pushes her over the top. So shout to Vlatko for just kind of like putting that out there. Like, Hey, don't just describe this African player as fast. Realize that she's a genius as well. You know, we've obviously talked a lot about Temo showing on the show. I don't know that we've talked a lot about her speed specifically. That is true. We've talked a lot about her playmaking. Like her striking is just. Say plus. Devastating. Yep. It's devastating. Speed can be contended with mm-hmm. through angles. 
right? And I think that's an important distinction to make. Like somebody could be faster than you, but if you take an angle on them, you can meet them where, you know, where you want to meet them. Right. But with Chewinga, it's like, she already knows that move. She already knows the counter to that move, the counter to the counter to that move. Mm-hmm. And she's just dancing in like wide open space. I think she is the front runner. Like who, who would be the front runner for MVP? of NWSL, like obviously three matches in, we're super duper early. Yeah. But I mean, she's changed that franchise. <laughs> yeah. Like, she's just no changed doubt. that franchise. We were talking about the Steph Curry quality of just like, something's happening here. I cannot take my <laughs> eyes off this. <laughs> right. Uh, I, she's totally got it. She's just an incredible player. And it reminds me of your viewpoint on the media rights deal. Sure. Where you're like, hey, let's do something now. Let's make sure coming right off the Spain winning the World Cup, kind of like a turning point kind of moment for the league. And I don't know, to my view, stepped up big time. We were even talking about Gotham FC being like, oh, look at this roster. Look at these players. Like, who's going to challenge them? It turns out a lot of fucking teams are going to challenge them. It would appear so, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, th- that's a great point. And I think we had like a little news item earlier in the uh, last week. Uh, Sophie Smith signed uh, an extension, a new contract with Portland Thorns. So, you know, you're going to have to spend to be able to contend. And Sophie Smith had some really interesting comments uh, at her press conference. Sophie Smith said something to the effect of Europe has great leagues. I understand that. Players go there and they develop their competitive leagues. That's great. You know, and I'm paraphrasing here, but she essentially said something like, but I don't think it's necessary for me or other players to go overseas to get that kind of development because the NWSL is a great league. And I just 100% co-sign this. And this is coming from a guy who has long, 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 despite being an American, has long been a subscriber to the idea that if you want the best football coaching, if you want, you know, to play against the best competition, and this is obviously very obviously speaking about the men's game, that you would go to Europe. That is not the case in women's football. This is one of the best leagues in the world. Smith understands that very clearly. I mean, Esther Gonzalez, who is a Spanish player, talked about it last year about how this is an elite league. So exactly what you said, the additions of these players like Chuinga, it only creates a cycle. It creates an arms race or a legs race if we want to make a terrible footballing joke. But it creates a race between the squads of, oh, okay, you got Chewinga. Who's the best center back I can get? Who's my best right back that I can sign from overseas? How much do you cost? Okay, I'll buy that contract and now I'll give you that yearly deal. Because if you're going to want a chance to compete, you got you to gotta spend for it. Yeah, 100% agree with that. And I'm now of the opinion, you know, no computer, no algorithm needed, that it's not really that this league's better or this league's not better. Hmm. This is just a different league, yeah. a different style of league. It's kind of like that makes sense. the NWSL has really got its own identity. And now it's like kind of doubling down on it and like being like, no, no, we think that this is the future of football. Really interesting that it's like the African player influx yeah. that's driving the change of the league. And I don't know, it's just really exciting. And I think it's it's sort of like that, like a leapfrog kind of mentality where it's like, all right, well, now let's see what happens in Europe as a result. Does it yeah. get even more technical or do they kind of pick up some of the more physical aspects of like what's happening here? Either way, bangers just <laughs> like pretty much every single week. So just a great time to be a fan of the sport. I, I say it all the time, just really appreciative of that we get the opportunity to to do this kind of show, and I'm and I'm glad to be doing it with you, my friend. Yeah, likewise, buddy. I mean, this is one of the elite leagues in the world, and we actually get to be there kind of like in the ground floor. Like, you see all the crests on these, like, English Premier League teams or teams in the Bundesliga that have, like, 1884 on the crest. <laughs> and it's just like, damn, what was, what was life like when people were going to those matches and watching those clubs develop? We're literally watching that right now in this league. We're watching the history be built. And so the only way it's going to be built is with great managers, but mostly, most importantly, great players. So it's, it's cool to be a part of to watch. 100%. Yeah. It's kind of reminding me of like what's happening with in Utah with like Ali Centnor. Like literally this is a club raised what weeks ago. Now. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like fresh in the league and like we're, we're literally day one watching this franchise being built. Just super, super exciting. Pretty cool. I appreciate you putting the tears together. I'm sorry. Pass along my appreciation to your Apple IIe 
um, in your in your basement there. <laughs> Let them know that I, uh, I really appreciate it. And your uh, your old school Sanyo printer um, mm-hmm. <laughs> doing some hardcore work there as well. Anything else you want to hit before we get out of here? I think that's it. That's uh, it for the tiers. We get we get a little bit of a uh, break from the league. And I think the other matches come back on like April 13th, right around there. Uh, we get She Believes Cup in between. Mm-hmm. So still more football to be watched. So yeah, I think we covered it for now. But as you always say, the football calendar never stops. That's right. She Believes that's right around the corner. We've got some Euro qualifiers. A couple tasty matchups there we're going to be dipping into. Nice. Um, all right, man. I think we did it. It's been another episode of Into the Channel. So like if you liked. And remember, subscribe or follow Into the Channel YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you like to watch or listen, at ITC underscore pod on X. Big thanks to you for watching, listening, subscribing, commenting, chiming in. Whatever it is that you do, however it is that you participate, we appreciate you. And I also appreciate you, my good man. My co-host, Mr. Grant Engel, you know, if we're tiering potential options for co-hosts on this podcast, there is just one tier, and that is the top tier, and you are the only one in that top tier. Likewise, buddy. I think we're living on that top tier together, but most importantly, on that top tier with us, everybody who enjoys the program, thanks for rocking with us. NWSL taking a week off for international break, but we'll be talking Chief Believes Cup and some of those other European matches, so we will see you guys then.